After a long time, I think it's time for doing another English video. In this video, I want to present my main project for some years, which is called Minicraft. And as you could already guess, it's a, it's a 3D game that's heavily oriented on Minecraft, published by Mojang. So Minicraft, in contrast to Minecraft, is written in JavaScript and it's only about 35 kilobytes in size and entirely inside the browser. So you could only open this page in order to play it without needing to download anything else. What I worked on lately is this word list you get when you open the page where you can select a, a world somebody else uploaded. For example, I could open this world, which is called Berlin Wall, and it's published by Hof Alex. And I can click on enter in, in order to open this world. I could also edit this world if it was mine. And as you can see here by the L indicator, this world is also downloaded into my local storage, so I could even play it without an internet connection right now. And this is another world that's actually downloaded. Yeah, let's just look right into it then and click on enter. Yes, and just as you expected, it looks like Minecraft slightly. There are of course some differences noticeable. First of all, you might wonder why we got this really pixely look here. And this is because in contrast to Minecraft, Minicraft is completely rendered in ray tracing. And if you hear ray tracing, you might think that we would just get ultra realistic images with full of effects like shadows and reflections, but what ray tracing means is that in JavaScript every single pixel is traced out instead of every surface being rendered by the GPU. So this ray traced image is not only ray traced, it's ray traced in the CPU in one single thread in JavaScript. So if you do the math, you could quite quickly figure out that it's just intense in the amount of pixels that are calculated. So we can actually see that by pressing F3. And on the upper left corner, we can see the resolution. It's, it's cal calculating its rendering. So we get about 300 times 150 pixels. We have a multiplier we can actually change in the settings. So if I set the multiplier to 1, I'm amazed that we even get more than 1 FPS at this point. But yeah, it's calculating thousands of pixels, almo almost millions of pixels, all in series. So, in case you are not really familiar with how GPUs work, on a GPU, many pixels can be calculated at the same time. But on, on a single threaded CPU application, one pixel needs to be traced after the other. So, in a single frame, it's calculating millions of pixels, or in this case just thousands of pixels, because I up to the multiplier again and yeah this is of course a really strong decrease in performance and, and speed of tracing but well it works you, you can see it's a bit pixelated here and there but for normal gameplay this is totally enough and yeah of course enough of these technical descriptions of course, we can just play it like we can build stuff like this and get other blocks. We also have an inventory menu here where we can 
get blocks and build with something different than before. And yeah, it's of course saved. So when we leave the world, it's saved. In this case, it's not uploaded because the world is owned by somebody else. But, but I could also download another world just to demonstrate you that we have more than one world available. So now it's downloaded. You can see it was really fast. And we could delete it from the local storage again. Uh, but I don't want to right now. And yeah, here we have another building in another world. In another world in the universe. And yeah. I think by now it gets quite boring if I just show you different worlds. We can also create a new world quite easily. For example, um, I could just call it demo time. I think that sounds quite neat. And we could build something in here. I could, for example, just place a gold block and call it a day. And that is our world right now. This is another world I just created uh, a day ago for another video. Um, no, actually this world was created before but it was imported. Well, speaking of importing worlds, wouldn't it be nice if you could play uh, a world that you have created in Minecraft by Mojang, in Minicraft? Well, actually, that is totally possible. I've created a converter that can convert a, a Minecraft world into a Minecraft world. So let me demonstrate this on this map that comes from my Minecraft server. So right now it's downloading the world. And now it's downloaded. Now we can enter the world. And let me enter this one here. The load command speeds up loading because normally it uh, the the rendering uh, has pres uh, pref uh, is preferenced preferenced so um, ah it's prioritized right so normally uh, uh, the game tries to first have a smooth frame rate and then load chunks but well that makes chunk loading quite slow sometimes so. You can see that this is a world that was um, strongly extended by buildings and we, we could also leave the city area to demonstrate that this is actually a Minecraft world with normal terrain. Yeah, so you could build something nicely in Minecraft and then import it into Minicraft. Actually this is not yet possible for normal users. I have the tool on my on my server but it's not yet accessible by users. So in future it should be accessible. And also what's accessible is the source code of this because it's an open source game. You could modify it and uh, have your own version of it basically. And to access the source code, you can click on project page. It's hosted on GitHub, as usual. And yeah, here we have quite a comprehensive to-do list. And um, actually what I worked on lately was also the localization of the game. So you can see that um, the interface is in English and that is because I I set the language to English, so I could also change the language back to German, which is my usual primary language. Um, let's see. Yeah. And let's move it down again where it was. And actually, uh, I just deleted it, I think. Let me quickly fix this up. English. Yeah. Here it is. And if we reload the page now, it should be in German. Yeah. And not only English and German are supported, let me open it just once again. We also have way, uh, a way to play it in Russian or in Ukrainian. And let's demonstrate the Russian version. 
here it is and let me move it to the front so now it should be in Russian which it is so if you you are Russian or Ukrainian you could by now play it in your native language which is quite a nice thing I think so that was it for this video and I hope some people like this project and maybe some people are interested in the technical background of it for example the web framework I used for the interface which is also developed by myself but I think I will do another video on that in the future that was it for today and bye bye